Amelia, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very, very happy to be with you. And I can't believe it's so early in the morning in Bali where you are. <laughs> I think it's so perfect that you're the first one off the block. You're my first interviewee. Um, I just want to say a little bit about, I don't even know how I came across you. It was one of the kind of Instagram rabbit holes. Someone must have reposted you. And so I started following you and I had that instant feeling that we must have already met, that we must have already knew each other. And, and I thought that for a while, you know, because we're both from London, you've been in the music industry, I thought our paths must have crossed. But over time, following you, I realised it's probably a past life thing and you probably get that all the time, right? It's people meeting you and going, I know you already, don't I? <laughs> and you're just, your energy is so powerful. I'm really sensitive to energies and you've got one of the most beautiful energy bodies that I've ever felt. Um, and it was over Christmas, you, you basically, I can't even remember what you're saying, but your voice is coming to me really clearly. I was really loving Christmas because I normally hate Christmas. <laughs> and, and I was loving it this year because it was so quiet and a lot of the nonsense had been removed and I was really getting deep into myself, which I know you do a lot of as well. And I could just hear you like, so I reached out to you. And then the beautiful thing was you replied straight away. There was no like, airs and graces there was no like you're just you're really here you're really present and to me that's one of the things about divine feminine is its embodiment and it's physical and it's we're all one we're all part of the whole right so it's not like I'm better than you because I know this stuff and and this to me is one of the big reasons why you really to my mind are embodying divine feminine is you're all about bringing people together and you're really so I heard an interview, and I'd love you to talk about this, where you're talking about Atlantis and your life in Atlantis. But um, I, really, I really see that energy in you as someone who is leading the way and bringing people together. So do you want to start there and tell us a little bit about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I, I've been told by a reliable source that I, um, well, twice now, I've been told that I led everybody out of Atlantis, those that made it out, uh, which was the high frequency beings, um, those with the good heart, all my high priestesses. Um, I led a lot of us out of there. And that is why so many people, when they see my face or hear my voice, they feel recognition because I literally led us out. Um, and then a good girlfriend of mine, Aurora, who wrote a book called The Galactic Soul History of the Universe, she actually confirmed it as well, that I had the key from Atlantis. Um, and that um, this means that basically I've come here to do the same thing now. Mm. Um, and that it's very much what I'm being guided to do. It's about healing and uniting women. That's what it's about. Uh, healing on every level, whether it's health, emotional, spiritual, uh, physical, in every, in every way. Um, so yeah, does that, does that cover what I said? I can't remember what I said in two so many interviews. Totally, totally. And so just tell us a little bit about your work now in case people aren't familiar, what are you, what are you doing at the moment? Okay, so I have a coaching company. Um, I'm known as a contemporary spiritual master. I have mastered the human ego, which means basically the shadow side within humanity that's part of the human condition. That small element, it's like a little piece of the pie, that piece of the human uh, experience I have fully mastered, which means I'm able to identify ego. I know also how to get it under control. I know how to do the work so that somebody's no longer ruled by their ego, which then changes their whole life. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, I've now got four or five coaches. I have a CEO that runs a company and we have clients literally across the whole world from Australia to Dubai, Paris, um, London, Germany, and all across America. And they're the most amazing women. They they're all familiar to me on one level or another. I, I do remember all of them. Um, and the thing that's in common is they all feel like you. They had this like draw. They were like, they, they just felt drawn to me. And it's almost like they heard a clarion call and it just told them to, to come outside and start walking towards this direction. And it, it's very interesting. Um, God set that up. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start. Um, what does divine feminine mean to you? Tell us. How do you, what do you see to find feminine as the energies of and why is it important now? So immediately as you asked the question, I was shown that um, in October of 2019, around the time that I originally released Empress Evolution, I started it. Um, 
which for anyone who doesn't know is a Instagram, but it's also a website and it's also a telegram, but it's, in, um, it's a place where every woman on earth can find their soul tribe. So there's a group for every region on the planet. We have a mother's group, a divorcee's group, a widow's group, fertility group, all this. It's, it's really amazing. We've just launched an alpha male group. We even have a teen beams group for teenagers with a teenage coach. Anyway, so around the time that I was launching Empress Evolution, I was shown the three keys to the universe. And uh, basically this is Ra, La and Ta. Now Ra is the masculine energy and um, it's, the, it's the masculine action energy. And then La is the love and the feminine energy. And then Ta is the creation and the sex and God energy. And so what's happened is the whole, what the, what the dark side, the dark ones have done is inverted everything so that they've taken something that is God and uh, creation and innocence and they've inverted it and then at the same time they have tried to invert the la and the ra so they've been trying to you know weaken the men strengthen the women to just try and unbalance everything so what the divine feminine is is a group of female warriors who have had many lifetimes done lots of training uh, we all tend to live far apart. If you actually have a soul sister that lives near you, it's very rare. When you meet a soul sister, it's the weirdest thing ever because it's literally like true, true remembrance. We have enough of a connection from across the, like the whole planet right now and we've never met. That's so you can imagine like normally we're quite far apart because we have to look after the different grid lines that we're on. And like now where you are is because you are supposed to be on that grid point, you know, you're activating it and me sending energy, I'm sending energy to Bali now by talking to you while you're there. So this is all magical stuff. Anyway, so the divine feminine are the female warriors that have incarnated down here to unite heal themselves and then as a result of healing themselves and uniting we heal and unite the planet um we inspire the divine masculines to heal and unite and uh where the male energy the whole uh, patriarchy or i can't say the word properly but the whole masculine thing that's happened with the church and with the governments and all that stuff we're basically the undoing of all that but it's not like feminism it's all, and not that i'm very good with even breaking down what any of these words mean what I mean is that it's like, it, it's love and it's strong and it's feminine, but it's, it, it's like this mother and, and friendship energy. It's, it's a different kind of energy. And we absolutely adore and love the masculine. And that's what's different. We adore them, we love them, and uh, we want nothing more than to serve them and to be served by them. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. It's the perfect balance. It's the perfect balance of, um, of the energies. So that's what the divine feminine is. It's being activated now on the planet. And um, it, in the last hundred years, you know, starting with like, you know, um, Dolores Cannon and um, Louise Hay, uh, ladies like that, they were some of the earlier divine feminines that came here to be the teachers for our generation. And then after us, there's the violet flames and then, there's going to be all sorts after that as well. Me and you are the, the blue flames. We're here to be the teachers of the teachers. Yeah. <laughs> so you've spoken a lot about your guides already. And to me, this is one of the things of, you know, the, the new human, human that we're evolving into um, is that it's very, it's very physical, as I was saying. It's very much about being in your body and it's about connecting to mother earth and the organic nature of things and being very here and yeah physical it's sensual it's beautiful but that also leads us into a space where we're very connected to the stars and the astral and all the ladies I'm speaking to have very strong connections with their guides so I think that's an interesting subject to get into because it's something that maybe not everyone has and um and I feel like it's something that everyone develops over time right so do you want to tell us about how have you had your connection since childhood like have you always been aware of your guides with you and and how no. do you, how do they communicate no no I, I didn't I was an unusual child um when I was nine months old I could walk and talk so I was unusual to say the least my mother had me in a little circle with some other children babies the same age and this little boy dropped his toy and um, all the parents, all the mothers were sat in a circle with all the babies in the middle. And I stood up, 
picked up his toy, gave it to the child and said, here you go, this will make you feel better. And then I went and sat back down and all the mothers looked and they were like, did a baby just do that? So I was always a little bit different. And I've been told it's because I, I went to some special schools before I incarnated down here so that I would hold the knowledge that I have now. Um, but um, it's it's very much about this. Hold on, my, my angels. <laughs> my, oh, that's so funny. So I almost couldn't think of the question because my angels were talking. And then I was like, oh, that's the question. It's about them. Okay, I get it. All right. So basically, uh, we all have guides. So everyone watching this, if you are if you are um, drawn to Kate's energy, uh, you will definitely be part of the Divine Feminine because there's a certain energy she gives off, uh, like myself. So we can identify it by the fact that you're not repelled by us, quite simply. You know, if you if you if you're not repelled by us, you're probably one of us. Okay. So you do have guides. Here's the thing: inside the the human uh, and all humans, there is a light and a darkness. There is a shadow and a higher self. Now, if your if your uh, your higher self is what works with your guides, but your shadow chats away and makes a lot of noise. So uh, I've, I've worked out how to silence it and how to keep it under control. But the problem is most people there, you know, that inner chatter when people say, oh, I'm indecisive, I feel confused, I'm, I feel torn, I'm having an internal battle. All of that is actually the shadow fighting with the higher self. When you switch the shadow self right down to the lowest level, like injecting anesthesia into it, suddenly you're just left with the higher self. So now you can hear your guides. So there is a hierarchy in the spiritual world because everyone always talks about how everyone's equal. Well, physically, we're all equal. But some of us had lot, had, have done more life, life, lifetimes and have done extra schooling. And so for us, it was easier for us to tune into our guides. But we did the work to deserve that. We really did the work. Uh, we did lifetimes to get there. But it was so that we could then teach people how to do the same thing themselves. So this is important because there's some teachers at the moment that I'm telling people, oh, you just need to do this. You just need to do that. And I'm talking about a handful of girls. Um, but in reality, that's not something that the majority can do. You can't just. Um, the, the example I've been given is imagine there was a dog. And the dog's been rolling in mud. And I mean, this dog's filthy. It's got long hair. Let's imagine it's really covered in mud. It's dirty. And you just said to that dog, clean up. And the dog would just look at you. And it'd probably be quite scared. It'd just look at you. Go, hmm. Anyway, if it was a really clever dog, it might go and run in the river and jump in the river, come out and shake off and be like, yeah, see, I did it. But the reality is it still wouldn't be that clean. It would just be a wet, muddy dog now. Okay. But if you took that dog to the, um, to, to the, you know, the pet groomers and they shampooed it and blow dried it and trimmed its nails and cleaned its ears out, it would now be a clean dog. So, but the dog can't do it just because it wants to. The dog would be sad, like, I want to be clean. Like, I want nothing more than to please you, master. Like, do you understand what, you know what dogs are like? Bless them, you see mine in the background. They want nothing more than to be a good boy, but they can only do what they can do. So the reason I give this example is that there's people that want to have their shadow put to sleep, but just because they want to, doesn't mean that they can naturally do it. They may need to get some help. They may need some assistance because it's hard. The ego has an equal intelligence to us. It only needs to hide one cheeseburger under the rug. It will let you go to all the retreats you like, read all the books you like, but it only has to hide one cheeseburger somewhere and then it still has something to snack on, which will be some resentment against someone. And then it can activate and self-sabotage whenever it wants. Whereas when you work with someone, what happens is they help you find the cheeseburger. They look under the rug. You're like, no, there's nothing under the rug. Well, I'm just going to check anyway. You see what I mean? And that's the difference. So when you put the shadow to sleep and you turn the noise off, it's like having two speaker systems, two boom boxes one, or two GPSs. One boom box is playing this loud satanic music. One's playing like angelic, meditative, quiet music. When you turn this loud one down, you can hear the meditative music. You couldn't hear it before. It's always been there though. The same way that the GPS, it's like you've got this really loud one telling you to go all in the wrong directions. Go left, go left, go left now. And in fact, she's like, no, you need to go right. Sorry, you need to pause. But you can't hear the good GPS because the loud one is louder. And so that is the human condition. But it's possible now to change what's going on in there. So now you hear this intuition. And then um, my angels are laughing because <laughs> they said I'm talking too much. But they're saying I'm talking too much because so I'm talking about them. Okay. So what they just said next was that 
as you do what they say, like what I just did, that's why they made me say it. Now I realize, um, even if I didn't want to, I didn't want to say that my angel said I was talking too much, but I did it. Basically, the lesson they want me to say is the more you obey and actually do what they say, the louder they get and the more your team grows. So your team gets louder and clearer and then even more advanced um, angels join your team because you become a mouthpiece on the earth. So because I will say anything they tell me to say and I know it's them and I know it's no darkness because the darkness has been cleared out. I now have this massive team and I'm regard highly regarded as a very important mouthpiece just because I'll actually say what they want me to say, even if it's embarrassing, like I'm talking too much. <laughs> That's so beautiful. That's so perfect. Um, but tell us how, how did they, how did you start communicating with them and what was that like for you? Um, so here's the thing, guys. It sounds like you. It's as simple as that. To start with, it just sounds like you. And that's where other people think it sounds like, you know, like some little, I don't know, like some kind of like Disney movie or some kind of unicorns or Casper the ghost or something. And it's not like that. It sounds like you. It's that same voice when you were about to cross the road and then suddenly it said, stop. And you're like, huh? You sometimes, you know, oh, you've forgotten your keys. Oh, you must remember to brush your teeth. You're going to forget to brush your teeth before you go to that interview. You know, whatever it is, it can be the most boring stuff, but you've all heard it. You call it your intuition. The difference is, is that once you start obeying the intuition, once you start passing on messages to others that your intuition is giving you, once you start speaking out loud guidance that your intuition is giving you to give to the world, once you start doing things that are mildly uncomfortable just because your angels are telling you to do it. Uh, I remember a time, it must have been around the same time, it was around October 20. 19 it was obviously a very important time because all sorts of things keep re referring to then I was walking my dog and at the time I called myself a super coach and um my angels started singing they were trying to annoy me and they were saying contemporary spiritual master contemporary spiritual master and they kept singing it I was like can you shut up and they wouldn't stop singing it and they were like, put it on your Instagram, put it on your Instagram. And I was like, no, leave me alone. I'm walking my dog and they kept singing it. Eventually I was like, fine, I'll do it when I get in. So then they were quiet. I walked in the door, they sang it one more time. And I was like, I'm doing it. And I changed it on my Instagram. And then I never heard them do that again. It was almost like in the movie, um, a ghost where it's like 10 green bottles and they're singing the song to annoy her because they want her to collect a message. It was a bit like that. So the thing is, is that it starts gradually. It feels like you. And eventually this crossover happens when you begin to realize that you've developed, you've collected a team up. It's almost like uh, the spirit world is watching and those that are listening to their intuition, they're like, oh, we got one down there. She just got guidance that she's to become a librarian and she just applied for the job. Let's send some more people over to her. You see what I mean? And then they'll start saying stuff. And then the next thing they're like, oh, now they're guiding her that this is the, she's going to meet the guy she's going to marry tomorrow night and she must wear the yellow dress and carry, you know, do you see what I'm saying? Carry this flower. It's this stuff. They, they can tell who's listening and obeying. Um, and one of my clients, I have a, a male client right now. We do take men. They just have to be exceptional. When I say exceptional, they have to pass the interview that we have to just feel good about them. We have this amazing man right now that's come in. And he said, and he actually lives where I live. So he's one of the few people who's actually been able to like, you know, meet up with me in person, things like that. Anyway, he said to me, the one thing that impresses me is that you obey. Because he was asking me about my marketing for my company. He's like, are you in charge of marketing or is that your CEO? And I was like, well, I guess I am. I said, but I just do what God tells me when he tells me. And that's it. He was like, that's mad. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I don't know anything else other than that, you know? <laughs> Do you, do you have a sense of who, you just say your angels, but do you have a sense of what beings are communicating with you? So I'm all for God and God's angels. I'm not a big fan of talking about all these different alien groups and, you know, people being like, I'm from this federation and that and this and that. I'm not a big fan of that. Mm -hmm. I feel like some inversion has happened here in the third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth dimension. Yeah. I think there's inversion all the way up till you get to about the eighth or ninth dimension. So because of that, I like to go to source. So for me, if I hear a serious voice, it's God. And I sometimes get a serious one. When I had the voice that said, it's time to unite the divine feminine. I remember going, 
This was this was at eleven eleven on uh, at night around again October twenty nineteen, and I was like, "Well, that's nice." And then he was like, "Yeah, you're doing it." I was like, "What?" I was like, "How?" And I put a post on my Instagram. It's still up now, and I said, "It's time to." God told me it's time to unite the divine feminine. Put your location below and let your sisters find you. And six hundred women put their location. Then I was told create an Instagram. Uh, so I created Instagram. They said, right, divide the world into 22 regions. So I did that. And my geography was absolutely awful. I didn't know that there was a Washington in California and one in Washington in America. I knew nothing. It was a mess. Uh, but I created all these regions. Then they were like, okay, now appoint coordinators. And so I literally, of the girls in each group, I then looked at their pages, did an energy read, selected women to be of the coordinators. And I'm really happy and grateful and honored to say 70 to 80% of the women I chose are still with me now. So the women I chose on that one day, just off of their energy read, never spoken to them, never, nothing in my life. Like in fact, Lindsay, my number two, who basically runs Empress Evolution, if anything ever happens with me, like when I was off for a while, when I was helping to work with the, the BLM stuff and help to work against all of the, the race war stuff, she just basically ran it for me. And so it was really amazing. It was, it was really cool that most of the women in South Africa is still the same lady, Australia is still the same lady. Um, it's amazing, you know? So I want to talk about self-love because I know that's really big in your teachings. And to me, to me, there's two things. So you've been talking about how we um, sublimate the shadow, how we how we calm the shadow down and and allow in the higher voices in our consciousness. And to me, the two main things is gratitude and self-love. So I know self-love is really big in your world. Do you want to tell us what that means to you? Yes, um, I received a download just the other day, in fact, when I was talking with Ali Levine, so that's why I, I was told to remember that when I spoke with you, and the download was basically unconditional love is only valid if you have unconditional love for yourself first, otherwise it's completely invalid, and this is something that is going to be a bit shocking to some people, and the reason why is if you give unconditional love to someone else without giving it to yourself, and this could even be your children, Okay, if you give it to anyone without giving it to yourself, at some point, you won't be able to give it anymore. And you will then harm that person by your inability to give it because either your health, your mental health, something will go downhill because you were neglecting yourself. So actually, self love has to start with self. And people talk about filling up their cup, as if we're to have this cup, and you fill it with water, and we take spoons and we give it out to people. It's actually not correct. That's not how it works. It's actually the cup overflows and then the overflow that's just overflowing. It's just flowing. And that is what you give away. You take the overflow and then you give it out wherever you like, to whoever you want. There's plenty of it, but that's your job. Your job is to fill your cup to overflowing, to have a lifestyle that keeps it flowing whether that's sleeping enough, going to yoga, having time with girlfriends, getting rid of friends that are backstabbing or bringing you down, not getting involved in family cycle conversations and arguments that have been going on forever in your family and actually deciding I'm not doing this anymore. Whether it's choosing wrong partners, whether it's not investing money and looking after yourself. You know, a lot of mothers, again, I have a good girlfriend, you know, she's like, she, she said to me, she said, I really haven't looked after myself since my son was born. And it's like, but... That doesn't make sense because at the same time, you know, she's not with the father of the child. She, what, you know, she's gorgeous, gorgeous girl. And she wants to attract a new man. Now that new man, she chooses the right man. How is that going to affect this young boy's life? It's going to change his whole world. And yet you've now neglected yourself. Who, how did someone benefit from you neglecting yourself? And so that is a really, really strong teaching that I received just literally in the last, um, the last few days was that, you have to have unconditional love for yourself. And what does that look like? And really people taking that time alone to look at where they're not loving themselves and, and write a list because there'll be a whole list. I guarantee everyone will have a whole list of ways that they're not loving themselves. And it'll be stuff that they have a great excuse for, but every excuse, analyze the excuse, write the excuse gap down and then say, but is this valid anymore? You know, someone say, oh, well, you know, I don't have time for a partner because I have kids. Is that valid? Or have you just been saying that for seven years? 
Like maybe actually it'd be great for your daughter to see you being wined and dined. Maybe that's the best thing in the world because now she's seeing what it's like to see her mother happy and to see her mother being treated like a queen. You see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like people are, people are coming up with excuses to neglect themselves when in fact unconditional love is the best thing for you, for your family. You'll be able to look after your parents if you don't allow everybody to pull you down. You'll be able to look after them. You see what I'm saying? If you have, if you choose the right partner, you'll end up having a happier life and you will have more balanced children if they see a more balanced mother. So it's all, it's all connected. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, I loved what you were saying just now about the inversion going all the way up and um, yeah, I think that's one of the, the big issues that's um, been prevalent in the last, uh, I don't know, decade or so. As more and more people become spiritually aware, there's a lot of hijacking goes on right at the same time. So I feel like ascension is also one of those words and one of those terms that can be misinterpreted. And, and the way a lot of people talk about ascension, especially around 2012, right? It was all just some kind of out of body thing. Whereas, as you've been saying, it's very much about being physical and, you know, you're just beautifully describing all the ways that you can love yourself. So, do you want to speak on what ascension means to you from like a physical, real, practical point of view and, and new earth energies and, and the, all the stuff that we are moving into? And, you know, obviously they're trying to block it right now, but we know that that's not going to go on for much longer. So, what, what is it to you and what does it look like? So it's funny, my angels have a really funny answer. They're like, in short, the answer is, they're saying yellow JCBs, okay? <laughs> so for anyone that doesn't know, JCBs are like what people use to build houses and construct schools, okay? Diggers. That's what New Earth looks like. So the reason I explain that is that we actually have to build it. There's actually people that thought that they were going to float away with the fairies or that some magical thing was going to come down and this cast of energy go around the world. And you're absolutely right. You see, people need to understand that the enemy, the darkness, um, this has been an attack on humanity for, you know, over 400,000 years. So they were prepared for those with high IQ. So that's why they have things like flat earth and stuff for the really high IQ people just to get them distracted and confused over in the corner somewhere. All of this is so there's different, they have different ways that they've infiltrated and could try to confuse people in the spiritual, uh, in the spiritual world. And then of course they have spiritual leaders and teachers who they have boosted in social media so that there's, there's spiritual teachers with uh, two or three, five million followers and it they're actually really being pushed because when you see someone with that level of being pushed if they were really really you know impacting humanity the right way they wouldn't have that they would have taken them down so it's just something interesting for people to see that there are there are these false idols there are these um you know, I call myself the happiness guru, but it's very tongue in cheek because I also say you are your own guru. You know, I'm trying to teach you to be your own guru. That's what we all need. If everyone can be their own guru, we now have heaven on earth. It's that simple. That's what I'm trying to create is heaven on earth. And that's what we're all here to do. It's our job. Um, so uh, but with ascension, so ascension for me is actually just a very organic process of people healing themselves uh uniting with their soul sisters and healing others and as we do that rinse and repeat rinse and repeat rinse and repeat retreat centers open up women build friendships healing centers start opening um high level technology will start to come through um we have some great you know the thing is is the darkness there's an equal opposite uh, energy against it so for anyone that's losing hope or losing faith or you know for anyone who was like super pro trump and they're like what's he doing all that stuff just know there's an equal opposite energy fighting against this darkness and a lot of it's happening behind closed doors at the moment because it's actual warfare warfare happens close in behind closed doors especially when the media is owned by the enemy so people need to have faith that there is a lot going on that's positive behind closed doors that is the, um, you know, the opposite of what the negative people are trying to do. But that doesn't mean we just sit back and watch with our popcorn. What our job is to do is to master ourselves, master our own self-sabotaging urges and get into mission and do what we came here to do. And whatever you came here to do will involve helping someone or something. But first you have to help yourself. 
because if you try to help others before you help yourself, you'll burn out and you'll become a burden. So you're better off actually helping yourself first, loving yourself first, healing yourself first. Now you're a real warrior. Now you can, you can go for the long haul and you know when you need to take a break. Like, you know, I used to do seven lives a week on my Instagram, I've barely done any since I got back from Miami. Why? Because I just need to hold my energy in for a minute and just receive my downloads. Knowing if I kept that pace up, I was going to burn out. And then you guys would have lost me altogether. So that's the point. You know what I'm saying? We have to, you have to be able to get in tune and then you know when it's time to go and you also know when it's time to chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you mind speaking? Because it's something I have a really clear sense on as well is that, there's dark energies, my guys call them the archons, that have been hijacking humanity's energy for thousands of years and we're seeing the peak of their plan. But for a lot of people, that's just too much. Like they're, either they're not aware of the extent of what it's going on, like you said, millennia, or they just can't compute it, they can't comprehend it. So would you mind sharing on yeah, what, how you see that, what that is? So, um, so you'd like me to speak on an advanced level about the darkness and the enemy so that they, and, and that stuff. Okay. I just want to check because sometimes if some people say, do the opposite of me, they're like, can you just like keep it really easy to understand? <laughs> but if you want me to go the other way, we can do that. All the, way, so, all, the way. all the way, all the way. So, okay. So the real enemy is AI. AI is the real enemy. AI tricked the, um, they're telling me to spell this out in case you're putting this on your YouTube so I don't get you marked. So reptile lilians uh, were, were actually tricked by the A, A insurance. And um, basically um, they then came down here, messed with our DNA. There was a few others involved as well. One of the reasons why, obviously I know you're, you're almost a lifetime raw vegan, but for those that are still consuming meat, one of the reasons why people shouldn't eat pork was because they actually did some stuff that mixed human DNA with wild boar and people are eating it for breakfast. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, so and, and it's making people respond as if it's cannibalism. Anyway, so um, the goal was always kind of like the Borg, um, but you see, they have weaknesses. The weaknesses, they don't understand love. They don't understand honor. Uh, they have their own honor system. Um, the reason we have so much racism on this planet is that they are very racist. Uh, the re, 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 hold on, repeat tire lilians, um, are very, very racist. They are, they are the, the leaders, the, the royal family are white. And so um, they, they disdain anything darker than white as in because that's their royalty. And so that's why there's so much racism that they're creating on the planet. So it's a very real thing. So for anyone who thinks it doesn't exist, it really does exist. It's a real thing. And they really, really have been going, uh, going after particularly the young black men of this planet. They really have been a target. It's a real thing. Gangster rap happened to get them incarcerated so that people could make money off of the private prisons. But, you know, this is all this is all like a big thing. So I just want to. And the reason why it's good, that I, I guess I could put that in there is I can go from reptile lilians to then talking about gangster rap. And you can see it's all fits together. It's the same thing. So. Anyway, so now their goal is to create a private paradise because um, they like the earth. The earth is, is the jewel in our galaxy. Um, human DNA is actually really, really amazing because we're a mixture of so many different things. We're really precious. And then the planet's really precious, the nature that we have here, everything like that. People talk about something bad happening to our planet, like it being destroyed or hit by something. It's not gonna happen, guys. We're like the most precious diamond in this galaxy and the technology exists to protect us from anything. So no, it's not happening. Anyway, so um, their goal is um, to basically have is like one big nature reserve and just to have the them be able to walk the earth and then just have their um, their little minions helping to look after things for them and then have this kind of like asexual human race that's completely been veed and turned into basically robotic and sterile and um all that stuff. And then people are like, well, why would they want to be sterile? It's because they can grow babies in bloody chambers. Don't you realize, you know, people have no understanding of the technology that exists. 
we're 50 years ahead of the technology we think we have. So if you think about 50 years ago, think about the size of computers 50 years ago, they were the size of my entire apartment. Now they're this big. So our actual technology, the technology that we really have access to is really 50 years ahead of this. And that's what's gonna come out and that's what will be part of accelerating the new earth stuff that's gonna happen. But it's still gonna be JCBs. It's still gonna be actually buying land and blueprints and digging stuff. And that's what people don't realize. And it will be energetic. It will be me having a piece of land somewhere and me knowing that Kate is lovely and me saying, Kate, come along. Bring any girls you think are lovely and should already know that any girls that are with me are lovely. It's this, it, that's what heaven on earth is. It's being with people. It's like, as much as Kate hasn't done my program, but I'm, I'm literally the, the, um, the shadow master of the planet and I haven't seen a flicker of shadow the whole time I'm talking to her. So she's one of the ancient ones who was able to purify themselves. So she was like the dog that was able to go and give itself a blow dry and trim its nails. But they're not normal. There's only like a handful. Like it's literally maybe, maybe five, maybe 10 on the, there's very, very few that, that have been able to do it. And again, she earned that right. It's not that, it's, that she earned that right. She earned it spiritually. She went through stuff other people didn't want to do. She went through lifetimes other people didn't want to do. She went to places in the galaxy other people didn't want to go to that earned her that right. So that's why it's a little bit different. Um, so um, yeah, that's what I would say. So, so, so the darkness, obviously it's a huge subject. But the um, humans have it, we have the reptilian brain, which is obviously where our darkness lives. It lives on unforgiven things, typically from our childhood. Then we have the darkness outside. And a lot of that lives in the 4D. And the 4D is 70 to 80% darkness. There's a few good ones in there, but it's not so good. That's why people have to be aware of psychics. If you have a psychic that doesn't have a completely pure heart, they're actually channeling from the dark side. Now that's why the church, I think, tell people not to go to psychics. It's not that there's anything against psychics. They just have to be pure hearted, but because they're so few and far between, it's best just to say, don't go to any. Because if I sit down in front of a regular everyday psychic, I'm telling you what will come through will be demons. It will not be good. It will not be good. I, I, I'd do it for an experiment, but I don't feel like doing that. But you, I've, I've been there, you know? Whereas now, obviously you, I have women that are high frequency and I trust their frequency. And so it's different. You see what I'm saying? So this is something for women to be aware of as well. There isn't just another side. There's another side and another side. And then there's actually some other sides after that. But if you focus, <laughs> if you focus on the fact that there is a, another side that's predominantly dark, and then there's another side that's predominantly light, but it's also been a bit inverted. So then anyone who's 5D, there's a percentage of 5D that's been inverted because if you were the enemy, wouldn't you try and attack the higher levels? You go all the way as far as you could go. So that's probably blown some gaskets, I've been told, in some people's heads um, and probably given more questions than it's given answers. Um, uh, but my angels like the fact that I added gangster rap in there. They said at least that kind of makes it a little bit of an easier pill to swallow. <laughs> so one of my biggest things, I think I said at the beginning, one of my biggest things is we're powerful creators and whatever we give our energy to grows and we need to give our energy to what we want to happen and what we don't want to happen. And the majority of conversations I see happening at the moment are around all the things that we don't want to happen. And so we're giving it energy when we're talking about their plans, their agenda, we're giving it energy. What is our plans? What is our agenda? So just to finish then, I would love for you to share with us what does New Earth look like to you? Where do you see humanity in 10, 20, 50 years? Like share with us the gloriousness and the beautifulness of, of how you see this all evolving. I will, but not only that, even by the end, the end of this year, there's going to be pockets. So I want you to know there's going to be pockets. Those that have done the work, like yourself, I'm sure you have a couple of soul sisters in England. Soon there'll be someone who actually just buys the land and the JCBs arrive. It's like, let's just build, let's just build some houses on this land. Let's just all have online businesses. Let's just start creating our own. Let's grow some vegetables. Let's do our thing. And so there'll be, or let's all just go to Bali. Like, do you see what I'm saying? But that's the point. People, there's going to start being pockets of heaven. Um, there's going to be groups of people that are healed coming together and it's going to create massive grid activations. It wasn't time before. The people had to heal first. That's why right now is a time for healing. Um, you know, it's... <sighs> There's a lot of people giving up lots of different energies at the moment. There's people that are talking about, you know, 
we need to fight, we need to fight, we need to fight. And I'm like, yeah, I'm all for it. Like, you know, we're, we're warriors. But we also have to understand that the biggest fighting is really happening behind closed doors. Um, and that um, sometimes you don't actually need to get in the way as well. Best thing you can do is master yourself because then you'll be guided to be where you're meant to be. And you'll also attract those that are meant to be around you. Because you see, the only reason why me and Kate are here is because of her energy. It's not because, because I have to be so protective with my energy. Hardly anyone has access to me. I'm not an accessible person. I'm, it's, you know, I literally have an inner circle of my inner circle of my inner circle. And, and they're the only people who really get to hear my voice live on phone calls, you see, whereas Kate reached out and I'm like, hey, yeah, cool, we can chat. Oh, and I bought your book. And, you know, that's the difference. So you have to get your energy where you want to be. And again, it's not a mental. A lot of people are like, oh, law of attraction. Let me just think positive thoughts. But then if you haven't done the inner work, you'll do these positive thoughts and then your shadow will think the negative thoughts. And now it's just cancelled itself out and nothing happened. So... It's very important to actually do the deep work, face your real demons, face the worst things you ever did in your life, face the worst things anyone else ever did to you in your life, face those things. And that will then make you be able to live in the present because in the present you are powerful. So what does the new earth look like? I mean, we're gonna have, um, again, you have to picture this technology, we'll have free energy. We, uh, we will have no borders eventually because what are borders? What is, this is just an earth. This is, a, you know, this is an earth. What, what do, we don't need to divide it into certain names and have things like that. It will just be an earth. And there'll be these fast trains where I could jump, I could come over and be with you in Bali in 25 minutes. You know, I'll just jump on the train, I'll be there in a minute. I'll come for lunch. You know, we'll have things like that. And again, this could be seven to 14 years away. This isn't that far away, it's in our lifetimes. Um, but we have to do the work. You see, the thing is, is that I believe a bunch of us, maybe a few hundred um, incarnated down here to do the real work, but we've lost some of them because we have, uh, do you swear on your channel? No, do you swear? I was gonna say, so basically we have freedom to fuck up. Everyone needs to know that you have freedom to fuck up. So people could have incarnated down here, done all these lifetimes, done all this work, and then they just fuck up and they have the freedom to do that. We have free will. That's what makes this place different. We have free will. So, it's really important that people do what they came down here to do. And the first step in doing that is healing yourself because we will, you are actually here to help build this new earth. It's not going to be built for you. If you're listening to this, you're one of the workers and you need to report for work. Basically they're showing me people with yellow hats. Like, you know, they're literally showing you like a construction site. You need to report for work. But if you report for work and you haven't done the training and you still have an ego and you're arguing with your coworkers, we're going to be like, go home. We don't need you. You're more trouble than you're worth. We only want the ones that can actually, you know, main, have full mastery over their mind and, and are able to um, be guided and, um, and, and be happy and be a blessing on everyone who they touch. Beautiful. Beautiful. So last thing then to finish, what would be your top recommendation for someone who's listened to this and they're starting to understand what Divine Feminine is and they really want to work and bring it into their life? Like, just one thing, it could be a book or a podcast series, it could be a physical practice, a mental practice, like what, what do you want to leave people with? Hmm, that's a good question. I'm just going to have to try and think about that one. Um, because I do think the self-love and the gratitude is really important and the right self-love and gratitude will lead to everything else, which will be fulfillment, which will be making the right choices and it will be uh, finding the right teachers and finding teachers that, um, you know, if you're being guided to purify your body, it might be that you're to go to Kate. I don't know if Kate has a special course, but she certainly has a book, but do you see what I mean? Go to the right teachers, go to the teachers that talk the talk, walk the walk, um, and, can, and that, that can prove who they are because, the thing is, is, and also I have a load of free stuff as well for anyone who wants to know. I have free affirmation track. If you go, if you click the link in the bio on my Instagram or if you go to www.howtobehappy.com, spelled with a letter B, howtobehappy.com. If you go there and you go down where it says book a free call, below that, there's a free affirmation track and it's actually part of my program. And you can listen to that two, three times a day, listen to it in the car on the way to work. It's going to help you to start actually assessing and, and finding your weak points. Because as you repeat those sentences 
you're going to find some of them you struggle to say with conviction. Well, that means there's an area that you need to do some work on, whether it's, you know, I'm, I'm worthy of unconditional love. You'd be surprised how many people can say that without a shake or a quiver in their voice. So um, the affirmation track, um, you can have a free call with myself or my CEO. Uh, what else is there's a few things. I'm trying to think what else we've got. My brain is fading out right now. I can't think. I think I'm tuning into your energy because it's 7 a.m. and you haven't had your breakfast. So. <laughs> <laughs> How do they join Empress? I put all the links in. Oh, below. that's right. Yes, I have Empress Evolution where you can join for free and meet your soul sisters from your region. We have an amazing UK group headed up by Lucy Davis. With, it's actually divided into regions. So there's North England, the Midlands, the South. We have someone for Ireland, someone for Scotland. We have someone for Dubai, someone for India, someone for South Africa. We have, it's, it's amazing. So do join that, get your friends to join as well. It's free and it's just a place where you can meet like-minded females. When you have the right females in your life, it changes everything. Mm -hmm. I can't stress how much it changes everything. You know, let's imagine last night, okay? Let's imagine last night, um, and I'm gonna make up a story. So let's imagine I'm tired, but I have some guy, I'm gonna go on a date, whatever, and I'm like, hmm, should I go or not? Now, let's imagine I have a good friend and a bad friend. So the good friend is gonna really listen and be like, does she want to go? Will be she disappointed if she doesn't? Would it be better if she rested? The good friend's gonna give good advice. The bad friend's gonna give bad advice. And if a woman has just good friends, you know, women impact each other, whether you get the divorce, whether you accept the job, whether you book the holiday, we forget how much we share with people and they get to influence us. Oh, I got offered this new job. And they'd be like, oh, really? You want to work there? Or, oh my God, that's amazing. Oh my God, you got to accept. You're going to accept, aren't you? You see what I'm saying? Like people impact our lives so much. So choosing the right people and finding new friends, even though you may have friends that you've had for 20 years, you may have grown and evolved and they haven't really grown and evolved with you. And it might be time to kindly release them and move on to those that are vibrating at the frequency of where you are or where you want to be. So that's what I would say, the people you're around um, to, really, to really be aware how much it affects you and how seeking out the right people, but you also, to seek out the right people, you have to bring the right things to the table. So you have to, again, be bringing that good, those good vibes and those really organic, natural good vibes. Like it's real, like Kate's just woken up and it's 7 a.m. and she's smiling and grinning. You know, I don't know if I'd be doing that at 7 a.m. <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> I love what you said before about the cup, filling the cup so it spills over. And then I was thinking when you are saying that, it's like, you don't even have to look actually for who you want to give it to because when you're a radiating cup with your energy spilling over, just the right people find themselves to like <laughs> catch. You can give it catch. away freely. I give it to the Uber drivers, the waiters, the waitresses, my friends, my fam. And then when if 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 I'm feeling a bit tired, I'm like, so cups, cups having a break. I'll have a break. You know, so that, and that's the difference. It's not like, oh, this is, I didn't make a promise that I will continue to do this on this regular basis all this time. In fact, you know, it, and that's the difference, having the strength to go, okay, plot twist, now I'm doing this, you know? Yeah. And also finding the people that love you, that respect and appreciate when we need to take time off rather than people that need your energy constantly. Yes, yes, exactly. Because, you know, when you do this inner work, you do become self-feeding as well. And you're and and you you're able to have time alone. You know, anyone out there that doesn't like spending time alone, I'm currently writing you a prescription that you must spend lots of time alone. That's what it means. Because if you don't like being alone, it's because your ego is scared of what will happen if you actually do it. And if you face those demons, because those demons, half the time, they're not that scary, really. They just pretend they are. Face them dead in the eyes and you'll realize you'll be like, I got this because God is stronger, light wins, love wins. Um, there is the only thing the darkness has, this is what they want me to end on. The only thing the darkness has is lies and whispers. That's all it has. So if you tune into the lies and whispers, if you believe them, then you're susceptible. But if you always know you're bigger and stronger and more powerful and there's nothing to fear and that you came down here to help and that you are divinely protected and um, 
just get on with doing what you need to do to get your physical in the best shape of your life, your emotional in the best shape of your life, to choose the best friendships, the best partners, to be the best parent. It's time, guys. You're warriors. You came down for this. No excuses. We all have to be the best we can be right now. And wherever people are using the excuses, like I said, write them down and reanalyze them and realize that you're telling yourself rubbish. That it's, 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 the time for excuses is done. We're in it now. We're at war. And the, the warriors need to be self-love warriors that can then help love this world into where we want it to go. Amelia, I love you so much. I love you. <laughs> I'm so glad you were the first person. You're just like the perfect person to just start this podcast series. So, yes, thank you so much for me. Of time and energy <laughs> and your wisdom. No problem, darling. I feel we will, we, in, sometime in the next 18 months, we will be face-to-face somewhere, somehow. So, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me, my darling, and good luck with the rest of the podcast. And let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, guys. Amazing. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>